I mean, going way back in the beginning, they hand cranked the projector. You know, they evolved. They added sound, and it, it's been the same ever since. They've never changed the technology of, of that. It's film run through the projector, and the click and clatter of the sprockets, and the slight flicker of the light on the screen. It's, it's a whole different ball game with the digitals. Well, the ones that are downstairs don't realize what's going on upstairs. Yeah, they want their popcorn. I'm Bruce Mitchinson. I uh, am the owner of the Fairview Cinema 3 for the past uh, 14 years. I, I worked in the uh, theater for 40 years until the uh, owners wanted to retire and I decided to uh, purchase the theater, the business from them and continue on. I spent $80,000 to have my first digital put in. It's the top of the line projector. I, I probably didn't need the, uh, the Cadillac, but I did. I need two more in order to have enough of the first run pictures to uh, compete with the area theater, which has eight screens, and they are all digital, and they are a, a part of a small chain of theaters, so, but I'm just one, one person with one theater with three screens, and I, I need, uh, need help to get more projectors in in order to stay here. My dad was a projectionist for 60 years until his retirement, and after his retirement, actually, he was uh, still in the, in the theaters. So I grew up around movie theaters. I've always lived in Hudson. We were the first twin theater in the area and, and the first triplex in the area. And, uh, I, I liked the, the business. I, one of the more enjoyable things at the end of a movie, when it's a good movie and people are applauding, and they come out and say, that was a terrific movie, great movie. What's the next one we can come see? In the same way that technology all around us, from the phones in our pockets and our computers and all that stuff, has changed our lives, a digital projection has come around. And it's, it's got its good points and its bad points. You know, the tough thing for these independent theaters is that the way that the transition has been uh, pushed by the industry really favors um, larger chains and studios and with this transition to digital which you know costs anywhere from sixty to a hundred thousand uh, dollars per screen that's the the biggest funding battle that they've faced in a long time and they will be squeezed out entirely if they don't do this good morning NATO about 15 years since there was first talk of changing over the distribution and projection system to digital. And at the time, The Phantom Menace was going to come out. George Lucas wanted it to play exclusively on, on digital projectors. And uh, all of the financial benefits that would come from shifting to digital distribution would go to the movie studios. They would end up uh, saving about a billion dollars a year in the cost of striking and shipping film prints. Up until a couple of years ago, you could walk into theaters across the country, and even though perhaps what would be showing on screen would be some new sci-fi effects-laden feature, the technology behind it in the booth would be technology that has not changed significantly in 100 years. 35 millimeter film is delivered in these boxes. They used to come in metal cans years ago. This is how the digital movie comes now. It's called a DCP. That's for Technicolor. And this is for Deluxe. Deluxe and Technicolor are the primary post-production companies that uh, prepare movies and digital cinema packages. They're also the primary places that have 
uh, been preparing film for distribution as well. They're really just the digital files that are uh, compressed onto a hard drive that are delivered to the theaters. They're usually hand delivered, so instead of providing a 35 millimeter print to the theater, we'll now provide DCP prints. Yeah, 10,000 foot you know, release print in the $1,500 range. DCP is a couple hundred dollars. You know, if you think about that, a billion dollars in savings forever is a, a pretty good business deal for the studios. There will be new technologies that will require upgrades, but the basic movie that's being shown in a digital cinema package will be, a, will be able to be shown on older equipment. The idea of the standards is to make sure that they would not become obsolete. Uh, we don't know yet how long it will last. I'd be surprised if they actually last more than 10 years. Beyond 10 years, you're going to have to start looking at, you know, upgrading the projector equipment again in the theaters themselves. Ten years ago, you got your first cell phone. That was a new type of expense for all of us, and it's a continuing, ongoing expense. You know, to, to purchase cell phones every couple of years, we, we've all gotten into this pattern, and the film industry is getting into this pattern too. While some of these theaters may pull off some kind of Kickstarter campaign to pay for one screen, they're not going to be able to go back to that well perpetually. And um, because the studios and the, the chain theaters and the technology providers are, are basically all synced up together in terms of how they can run their business and how they can make money, it doesn't favor the, the small independent theater who is just going to have to keep paying and paying. You know, at this point, without any uh, real advantage in terms of operation or quality of presentation. The initial transition has some advantages on operation and presentation, but it's hard to see how it's going to justify the continuing cost of uh, a, a new projector every six or eight or ten years when they've been, you know, for the last century they had maybe one or two or three projectors and now they're looking at, you know, a real multiple of that for the next century. My, my objective right now is just to get the digital projectors in so I can at least stay in business for a while. You know, until the next upgrade, then I'll worry about that, but one step at a time. Uh, in terms of theaters, uh, 5,750 theaters and 4,600 of them have converted, which is just over 80%. There are 40,000 screens, uh, approximately 36,700 are now digital, just over 90%. You know, the 10% of theaters that haven't converted are the little guys. I'm not getting all the first runs, and that's why it's okay because I'm putting in the other type of movies, uh, the independent and art, but I try to run movies which enhances your mind a little bit, that presents questions, some underlying uh, you know, concern. The history of film is in a way the history of its technology. I know there are plenty of people who said sound is a really bad thing for movies. You know, who needs sound? But if you were a painter and I said to you, cadmium red medium is no longer available to you. I have this other kind of red, which you'll like, but this red, no. That's what it feels like to me when you get rid of black and white, when you get rid of film. Uh, you're removing the tools for the artist to use. And it's okay if I choose not to use them. But it's not okay if you take them from me before I'm finished. But when it comes down to it, uh, it's really nice to, to throw something up on screen and know that it's going to look basically perfect. The picture on the screen is very crisp, very clear. There is no flicker. There is this, there is this feeling that the perfection of the technological age is somehow at odds with our own imperfections. For, you know, for your smaller operator who wants to keep independent film alive, that's a really important goal. And in the long run, you know, once we're through the transition, it's much cheaper for those independent filmmakers to get their movies uh, into that independent cinema. The, the irony, though, is that the cost of the transition is challenging enough uh, that some of the independent operators uh, may not be able to survive the transition. The weather's going to delay things, I guess, today. A committee was formed to help me. I didn't go out, reach out for anyone, but uh, a group of my 
good customers uh, got together and asked, what can we do to, to, to help you and keep the Fairview Cinema open? Let's start in. I'll start baking cookies and cake and we'll have bake sales and uh, let's, let's get started. We have a, a rich film culture in part because there are a lot of theaters that could survive for a long time as local brick and mortar businesses without high overhead. Well, now the overhead is skyrocketing. And the way that you read about movies is when they play in movie theaters and you read reviews and features and so forth. Um, when little movies aren't really playing in theaters, then it seems likely that it's going to be the big movies that are playing in, in, in theaters will be the ones that get all the, all the coverage and it just makes, that makes the smaller movies even smaller. If you don't have a choice at the local theater, everything is playing Thor 2, which maybe, I haven't seen Thor 2, maybe it's great, I don't know, but the point is, is it's only one kind of movie. Now, there are other ways for the audience to see these films, so that's great, right? But the flip side is we miss the big screen. We miss the communal experience. We miss the magic of going to the cinema and having that moment where the lights begin to dim and the potential of the film is limitless. We've stumbled upon in the last hundred years this hardwired, strong connection where we're able to lose ourselves and melt into the creativity uh, and the narrative of some artist who has a better and, and kind of more colorful imagination than we do. Morning, Carol. I just felt that with the other theater being up the road, that uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't matter that much. You know, when the store closes, people go to another store. But I've been, I've been humbled by the fact that so many people in Hudson, in the area, want to keep the Fairview Cinema open. So far, we raised about $11,000, which is good in one aspect, but not enough for a projector. But we're going to keep on going. Like the committee says they keep backing me as long as I want to go, and, I, and I'm going to go. Thank you.